Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to Everest Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. This is part two of painting the catcher's mask. Part one was all about the prep and base coating of this mask. This is a really cool project for me because it was a little bit outside my wheelhouse, painting on something that has so many contours, bevels, and holes in it was just something that I'm not really used to doing. I think the result turned out really good. If you're interested in seeing how I got there, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. Thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. With that, let's get started. All right, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna flood this in with Wicked Opaque Limelight Green. And I'm gonna build this up slowly. Probably about three, four, maybe even five light coats so I get the consistency or the tone that I'm looking for. And you can see I'm all taped off. I have everything covered because the overspray, it will just get everywhere and anywhere that you don't have taped off. So a very important step that you tape everything off. And as you can see, I'm using the fine line tape as my border. Now the contours in this helmet were very challenging. Even with the fine line tape, that contours very well. Keeping the tape down into the contours was very challenging. So you constantly have to be pressing them down sometimes. All right, so now once that's dry, I can come back in here with my transfer tape and I'll cover everything off. And this is where the fine line tape really comes in handy. I'm going to take, I'm going to cut right on the fine line tape. Now again, when I'm squeezing this down, you're trying to get as little wrinkles as possible, which is impossible to do, but you're trying to get this down into the contours but yet as smooth as possible because anywhere you do get a little fold, that's going to be a place where overspray can sneak in. Now I printed out a reference for the threads that I want on top of the helmet for the softball. And I'm going to line this up and center it up with the helmet so I can come in with my carbon paper and trace my lines onto my transfer tape. Again, not an easy task because of all the contours. So I may have to come back in and sketch a little freehand for the lines that I missed. I'll just put my reference up there so I could look at it because I'm gonna have to come in here. I'm gonna have to fill in a few lines that I didn't get because of the contours with the carbon paper. So now I have the tedious task of cutting each individual thread out with the X-Acto blade. And then I'm going to come in with the weeding tool. The weeding tool is an invaluable tool when you're doing work like this. Now I'm going to come in and flood the threads in with Wicket Red. And when you're spraying at any mask, whether it's this mask with the transfer tape or any other mask, you want to be at 90 degrees to the surface as much as possible. It really does help with anything bleeding underneath the mask. Now that I have that done, we'll take the mask off. We'll see what we got. Before I go in detail any further, I'm going to put some smoke black in the gun here. Smoke black is like a very reduced black without having to reduce it. I really do like this black for shading. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to follow the fine line tape, spraying mostly on the tape and letting the bounce technique let the overspray right into the softball. You don't want to go too much right here at this particular point 
because if you go too dark, again, it's always easier to go darker. You just really can't go lighter. Okay, I could always come back in and darken it later. All right, so I got myself a template here and I taped it all up. I found a really fine line in one of my templates that I'm gonna be using for the seam between the threads. Now I'm taking another one of my favorite templates and I'm just adding a little bit of depth and definition around the threads. So also pretty satisfied with that. I'm going to take off the mask and see what we have. All right, so now I put transfer tape all in the areas where I want the flag and drew my flag out. Kind of jumped ahead here on the film but i went in and i took all the red stripes out and flooded it in with wicked red All right, so now I'm going to take off the masking where the white stripes will be. And if you saw part one, you'll know that there is white coarse metallic base coated on the entire mask. And that's what we're going to be using for our white stripes. So we, there'll be no need to paint anything here. You should have to just remove the tape. Now, if I didn't mention earlier, the main brush I'm using to do all of this is an Iwata HPC. I'm also using my Eclipse as well. And I did a little work with the Micron too, but most of it was done with the Eclipse and the HPC. I also would like to note that I have the entire inside of the mask taped up, trying to prevent any kind of overspray or a lot of paint getting in on the Velcro strips. I did leave an eighth inch border all the way around inside the mask, so that my Wicked colors would overlap into the mask and underneath the padding. So now I'm taking off the tape, leaving the stars behind where we're gonna be flooding in our blue. The key to doing something like this on this entire mask was trying to ignore where all of the contours and the holes were and trying to go straight over them. The key to those contours and holes are making sure that they're taped up well because that's where you will get some bleed through. So again, just like before, you want to build this up in you know, a few light coats until you achieve the tone that you want. It's transparent paint or semi-transparent paint basically, so the more coats you put on, the darker it'll get.
All right, now that we got that flooded in, we can take the mask off. Grab our weeding tool and we can start taking the stars off. So this paint is dry, but it's not fully cured. And what's cool about this at this stage, even though it's wicked colors and if it dried totally, you wouldn't be able to do this, but being it's still technically not cured, I can grab my eraser tool, my aggressive eraser, and I can erase out any blue that may have bled into the white areas. All right, so now we're gonna start our shading. We're gonna put some smoke black in the gun and we're gonna to wanna to really pay attention to where our highs and our lows. So right now we wanna pay attention to where the lows are gonna be in the flag. And you're gonna see I'm moving the brush, even though I have it sped up, I'm still moving the brush quite quickly. I'm moving it quickly and spraying lightly. Right here, less is more. So you just wanna start putting some shadows in, again, in those low areas. You could always go back and build a tone, but once you go too dark, you can't go back. Follow your contours, and again, run it through just like if the holes or the spaces weren't there. Now you'll see in a second here, when we add the white, it's gonna bring out those darker tones even more. So now I got detail white loaded up here in the gun. And now you're gonna wanna hit all of the high spots, which will be in between the shadows that you just put in. And as you can see, as I'm putting them in, it really starts making the flag look like it's rolling. All right, so let's remove the mask on the rest of the helmet. And as you can see, you can see some orange fine line tape there. I was playing around with some different designs. I decided not to do that. You'll see in a second, I'll just remove that. All right, so I cut some templates or stencils out on the Cricut. And this one here happens to be some script writing. I'm gonna use a center hinge technique on this. So I have some fine line tape at the center and I'm gonna peel back to it. This is flexible stencil material for the Cricut machine. It's a lot like Frisket, just a lot better. I really do like working with this stuff. You can lay it over any of your artwork Take the backing off, lay it over your artwork, and you see right through it. So it's easy to, you know, cut out patterns and stuff with it right on your project. So once I peel it back to the center or the tape, I'm gonna lay my blade down and just rip off the paper. And then we're gonna push from the center or the tape out, making sure we get everything on smooth. So now once I do that, I can remove the tape at the center and just repeat on the right side. Now we can remove the transfer tape. And now we have our stencil on.
on the number, I'm gonna use an end hinge technique on this one. It's basically like the center, it's just your taping on the end, as you can see here. And then you always wanna smooth out or rub it down from wherever your tape end is. This was a little tricky here. Again, I'm going over a hole with some beveled edges and you don't wanna push it down into the hole or the beveled edge. You wanna go right over top of it like it's not even there. You wanna lay this down as smooth as you can. All right, now we're gonna to wanna to make some slices in that beveled hole so we can push our stencil material down into the hole and wrap it into the inside of the helmet. All right, so let's move over to the front logo. We already have that one on, same procedure as the other two, but now I'm gonna get some transfer tape and I'm going to tape up all the way around it. I'm gonna leave my edges up. That prevents the overspray from traveling anywhere past that tape. But again, you can't be too careful on covering things up because you think the overspray isn't getting anywhere and then you look and it has gotten someplace where you just didn't want it to. So you really can't be too careful when you're doing stuff like this. It's really worth the extra effort. You'll even see I have a paper towel down below of the mask, just in case. So again, some light coats here, build it up slowly. This took four light coats to get it to where I wanted it to be. Once I had that all flooded in, we take our mask off. Peel our stencil material off. And we got a nice clean logo. So we're gonna do the same on the pen and the script. If you have to push that stencil material down or your tape or whatever you got going on, if not, you're gonna have some fixing to do when you take the stencil off. I gotta say, the Cricut did a fantastic job on this script lettering. It was very fine, it was very tedious to work with, but overall, the Cricut did an awesome job. I didn't wanna lay vinyl letters down. I wanted to keep the mask all paint, so it was worth taking the time and the patience to get such a fine mask or detail. All right, now we're on the last step. I'm gonna be using a 2K clear here. I'm gonna be using the Spray Max. I have a video on Spray Max if you want more information on it. I have a couple videos on Spray Max. On the product with a review. As you can see, I really like this product because I use it in a lot of my videos. But right there, what I did was I took the red knob off the cap, put it onto the bottom of the can, pressed down. That releases or pops a cylinder inside of hardener. You shake it up for two minutes really good. Now you got a 2K Catalyst Clear. It's an automotive clear, very durable, and you definitely want to use this on something, especially if it's going to take a beating like this catcher mask is going to. So I just did a little test panel there where I sprayed it out just to make sure it's spraying right, and you have a choice on which way you want a vertical or a horizontal pattern. Now this is just a tack coat. I always like to put just a tack coat as my first coat. What I mean by that, I'm not gonna spray it on real wet. 
I'm just getting the clear on and I'm gonna wait till it tacks up. I'm gonna put three to four coats. I actually put four coats on this particular piece. Every time I put a coat on, I wait till it tacks up before I put the next coat on. Each coat, I get a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more wet until I achieve the result that I'm looking for. As you can see, I'm really running my hand with the contour of the mask. I'm trying to keep a consistent distance and speed as I spray, holding the can about four inches away from the mask. Well, all right, there you have it. For those of you who stuck around to the end and got to see all of the challenges that I went through to finish this piece, in the end, I'm really happy the way it turned out. It looks really good. The spray max clear, as always, performed beautifully. Got no orange peel with it. It looks absolutely fantastic. I have a couple videos on spray max if you want to go check out that product. And with that, I hope you liked this video. If you did, consider subscribing. You know the drill. Check out those links down below. Thumbs up, a couple comments, really helps out. We're growing and I really appreciate you guys. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.